using a wing originally designed for a supersonic airliner, the company began the supersonic cruise and maneuvering program. The wing was not unlike that of Sweden's Draken fighter, a delta with a cranked arrow or bent leading edge. According to designers, the cranked arrow design gave the aircraft substantial gains in payload and range without sacrificing agility. In 1980, the Air Force and General Dynamics began modifying a few pre-production F-16s into what would become the first F-16XL. Called the F-16E by the Air Force, the XL name would stick, becoming the definitive Delta Wing Viper. Changing the XL wing required a longer fuselage. Over four and a half feet were added by lengthening the airframe. Extensive use of composite materials, then new to the aircraft industry, gave the XL more than double its original wing area while gaining less than a ton and a half in total weight. Once the modifications were complete, the first XL was ready. Having flown the Saab Draken to familiarize himself with a cranked arrow wing, test pilot Jim McKinney took the XL skyward on July the 3rd. 1982. Initial flights showed the designers were right about the potential of the cranked arrow wing. Joined by the two-seat version in October 1982, the aircraft performed like a charm. Carrying up to 16 500-pound bombs cleaned up, the XLs could also be punishing ground attack aircraft. The XL had over twice the payload capacity of the standard Falcon, with almost a 50% increase in range. The bigger wing also meant for a much smoother ride at lower altitude. In 1981, the US Air Force started the Advanced Tactical Fighter Program. The goal, replace the aging F-4 Phantom in the role of ground attack. McDonnell Douglas with its modified two-seat F-15B and General Dynamics with the XL were the main competitors. During the competition, the XL had demonstrated an ability to lift a heavy array of weapons. On one mission, the single-seater dropped 12 500-pound bombs the equivalent of carrying two full-sized cars under the wings. But the XLs never met one important goal, supercruise. The ability to fly without the afterburner lit at supersonic speeds. Zipping over enemy lines without the huge infrared signature of an afterburner was becoming a must in modern warfare. The showdown between the F-15E and the XL continued through early 1984. Then the Air Force announced their decision. They had chosen the Eagle over the XL. Some experts claimed that the XL was the better aircraft, but a desire to keep the F-15 line open in St. Louis played a role in the decision. Whatever the case, the F-15E came out ahead. After losing the tactical fighter competition, the two XLs were put in storage, first at Edwards and later in Fort Worth. In late 1988, NASA proposed using the XLs for advanced supersonic airflow testing. They took over the aircraft in 1989. They were soon modified to demonstrate the benefits of something called laminar flow. To achieve laminar flow, the turbulent air on the surface of a wing must be removed. The XL was given a special wing-mounted fairing filled with millions of microscopic holes, each bored with a laser beam. NASA then added a vacuum pump to draw the disturbed layer of air inside the wing. This allowed the surface airflow to become smooth or laminar. 
the benefit of laminar flow is less drag. The results of this experiment were dramatic. A plane that couldn't achieve supercruise before was suddenly capable of non-afterburning supersonic flight.